we talked a lot about, especially in your annual conference presentation, mm -hmm. about leadership that mm -hmm. young adults can offer the church. Mm -hmm. So what do you think lay people who are young adults can offer the church particularly? Yeah, I think young adult lay leaders are, are pivotal mm -hmm. uh, to this whole movement, really. Um, I think I'm privileged. Uh, I'm on staff at a church, and so that's not as lay, mm -hmm. but I am not appointed. I'm not a clergy. Okay. I'm just on staff, and it's been really neat for me to be the bridge uh, to mm -hmm. get more young adults a part of leadership. Because the okay. more, I, for me, the more and more I see young adults in leadership, the more we're really thinking that way, right? So if we don't have them in leadership or we're not really being intentional with those relationships, um, we can't really think about how to move forward to, to be in relationship with young adults great, greater. Um, so I think the first thing is that it helps influence the direction of the church, right? Mm -hmm. It helps see, like, what are young adults asking? What are they thinking? You know, what do they want in the church? Okay. If we don't have them in leadership, we don't know, we don't know the answers, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the key is to make sure that they're there, they're present, they're given a voice. Um, but I think giving them spaces, right? So giving them spaces to mourn the reality that their peers are in the church or more their, mourn their disappointment in the church. Give them spaces to really wrestle with theology, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and to give young, ad empower young adults to lead that for other young adults, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to see more of that kind of organic, that those authentic relationships to be to be formed, right? And and so I, I just I laugh because I think our generation is like the most educated uh, you know generation out there, right? Um, I just saw a statistic that said that ninety percent of high school graduates are going to college, right? Or oh. that they're considering going to college, right? Mm -hmm. That's huge, right? It is. Yeah. And so why wouldn't we? Why would we not want? these young, vibrant, energetic college students and adults that come back to the church to help lead, right? Mm -hmm. um, they can preach, you know, God is speaking to them as well, right? They can lead small groups or they can just have conversations with the pastor to help them, right? But I think it's beautiful when all of that comes together, right? Yeah. Um, and as we kind of have more equality with leadership and we really see some key lay people come to leadership, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then they would want to invite their peers because they're having a voice, right? Yeah. They, they're having influence over decisions that are being made, right? Like, I'm excited about what's going on in my church this fall because I have voice in it, right? Mm -hmm. And I see we're going somewhere, right? Like, yes. I want to invite my young adult friends to that, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I wouldn't have that voice, would I be as passionate as I am? Probably not. Right, right. That's cool. That's cool, yeah. As a, as a young lay person myself, uh -huh. I, I, I really do thank my own congregation for mm. all of the leadership abilities that mm. they have not only put into me, but all the leadership chances that they have given wow. me, to the chances to take a part in the church and take ownership within right. my own congregation. And I know that that's not, um, that's not something that every young adult has the chance to do, sure. but it's something that um, for young adults, it can be very empowering, it can uh, okay. have a, a sense of ownership, and it can help a person's faith and faith journey so yeah. much. So I can definitely see that that is important for young adults to, yeah. especially lay people, yeah. to have the mm -hmm. opportunities to take part in the church and mm -hmm. have the leadership roles that the yeah. church affords. Yeah. yeah, I mean, imagine the scene if like you walk into a church, into a sanctuary, mm -hmm. and the person leading is a young adult, right? Mm -hmm. As a young adult, wow, this church actually sees me, they acknowledge who I am, right? Mm -hmm. I would want I would want to go to a church like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I wonder like, you, like those opportunities that are given, right? Mm -hmm. That empowers them, that helps them engage greater. Right? Um, yeah. And who cares if they make mistakes? Because we all make mistakes, right? Exactly. It's not about perfection, it's about worship, right? And so I wonder if it, that we can break down some of those, you know, perfectionistic tendencies that we mm -hmm. have, right? Mm -hmm. But to say, you know what, let's just lead, let's just bring new creative voices. Yeah. But I wonder if the hard thing is, right? And you mm -hmm. probably say this, um, is that when we bring lay people, especially young adults, into leadership, that requires change. It does. And that requires does. deep change, mm -hmm. um, like paradigm shifting change, right? <laughs> yeah. From old ways to new ways, or from good old ways to new old ways, or just whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. So we've talked a little bit about lay leadership within the church, and also during your presentation at annual conference, you talked mm -hmm. a lot about um, kind of the dearth of mm -hmm. clergy leadership that are young adults mm -hmm. in not only in the Susquehanna Annual Conference, but in the United Methodist Church and even Protestantism in general. So I was wondering if you could expand a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Can you think of some ideas of why some of those young adult clergy are missing right. or what is, has hindered those young adult clergy from getting that chance or mm -hmm. why, what the church can do to encourage young adult clergy? Yeah. I wonder, and I can only speak from my personal kind mm -hmm. of uh, perspective, but I wonder I think we have a deep disappointment in the church. Mm -hmm. right? So we have a deep disappointment in the leaders that run the church. So in our case, you know, the hierarchical system that's in place, right. uh, or it's so our local churches, right? So those leaders. And I think we, I think we're skeptical of the church and we're skeptical of the leadership. So I think 
part of the part of the issue with clergy is we're still skeptical of this whole thing about being a part of the system, mm-hmm. right? Being a part of the hierarchical system, um, being a part of the appointment process, you know, <laughs> yeah. all those different aspects that are so true to who we are as our identity. Um, and I wonder if um, like that's part of that, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I wonder, you know. Because we are overly educated, um, we make a, a lot, a lot of money. Right? So <laughs> money is a factor, right? Yeah. Um, but I just wonder if it's uh, if young adults are wanting to do more than just be pastors, right, or hmm. just being clergy. So I wonder um, if part of the issue is that we have you know single uh, career people in ministry, mm-hmm. and the thought of for me being in ministry for the next forty years. In it being appointed for the next 40, 50 years freaks me out. Like, <laughs> yeah. that does not seem enjoyable, yeah. right? Uh, and so I wonder if, like, beginning to be innovative, and, and I wonder if that mm-hmm. innovation and creativity is what keeps us away because we're not seeing that, mm-hmm. you know, or we're not giving spaces to be innovative and yeah. truly creative uh, like we would want to be. Um, and so I wonder if, like, co- combination of all of those things, where we really only go into this if we feel like God is really calling us, right? Yeah. Uh, so asking new questions and being willing to be different and giving spaces for young people who want to do church starts or Mm -hmm. do big old visions that have never been seen before, like giving space for that Um, and being okay uh, with young leaders uh, who want to lead, right? Empowering them to do that. Um, And I wonder if that's uh, a part of that solution. Yeah. So we talked a lot about young adults today, obviously. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to take a question and we're kind of going to blow that all up. (laughs) So young adults, um, the young adults that are around today are probably or definitely the most diverse group of young adults that have ever existed in America. Mm -hmm. And that's from all different kinds of demographics, from race and Mm -hmm. and um, and sexuality and all kinds of different uh, demographics. So I was wondering when we were talking about these young adults as kind of this big monolithic thing. How can congregations start to work to see the diversity and all the different experiences that this generation with um, that is just so diverse has? Mm. I think the very first thing that they have to do, that we all have to do, is who is around us. So mm. who has God already given us? So who are those young, those youth members? Who are those young adults who are around us? And so they could be inside of our church, right? Mm-hmm. So they could be... Um, yeah, a, a faithful member of our church who is there just because of relationships, right? Because mm-hmm. they have loved growing up there, so that's why they stuck around. Uh, or, or is it someone in our own life? So for me, is it a peer or is it a sibling? Uh, but for other congregation members, it could be their, their child or their grandchild. And I think beginning to ask some of these kind of questions, mm-hmm. like why are you disconnected from the church? Why are you disengaged? Why, are, why do you not want to go to church, right? Hmm. Yeah. And, but make sure you create like kind of this you know, very safe and supportive type of environment. But I wonder if just that engaging, right? That's the biggest thing for me. Like I, I, don't, I can't have this conversation unless I first engage with young adults, right? Mm-hmm. So I've engaged, I've asked questions, I've been very kind of inquisitive about why they're not engaged. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if that's where we have to start, right? We have to start with authentic relationships and begin to say, this is, this is who you are. Mm-hmm. I need to acknowledge you. I need to acknowledge that you don't like the church. I need to acknowledge yeah. that you're disappointed with it. It's like, I need to tell you that it is perfectly okay to be who you are, right? Mm-hmm. So now you respect me, right? Yeah, yeah. And so once that, we can say, well, now how can we just be in relationship together? Maybe not even ministry together, but how can this be in relationship together? So I can grow from you and you can grow from me, right? right, right. So it's this really deep kind of reverse mentoring type of uh-huh. relationship, right? And then just see where God leads, right? But I think it's key. This is so overwhelming. Like it is yeah, so yeah. overwhelming to think about these statistics around on the 50 million young adults in the world. That is a huge number, right? <laughs> but who are those five? Who, who is that one? young adult that is in my life that I could just speak into, right? Mm-hmm. And just be a support for, be Christ-like with them and for them. Uh, so I wonder if that's where we just should start. And that's beautiful. That and is. When that kind of stuff happens. And if small groups rise out of that, if if leadership rises out of that, or if a whole new worship service for young adults rise out of that, that is, that's, that's secondary, mm-hmm. right? That's program. That's making the church look good. <laughs> but what comes first is a deep relationship with young adults, a deep, authentic relationship that's rooted all in Christ. And I think that's where we have to begin. 